Okay, so today we have got the Ham International Jumbo Project. And today we're going to be looking under the hood. We're going to take a look and see what makes this thing tick. Now, I will say there's a lot of people that subscribe to this channel who are very technically minded. There are other people who are intermediates and there's other people that um, are just curious to work out that how things work. And uh, it's a bit of a balance in that trying to uh, accommodate everybody. However, I'm going to sort of keep it reasonably simple and um, it's, it's, if stuff goes over your head, go and look it up, you know, or ask questions, even better. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, if you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe. It really helps us. have got this is basically a little diagram of what what's happening and i'll work through it forget microcontrollers forget microcomputers forget sdr forget um fast fourier transforms let's just look at this okay so what we've got is our antenna here we basically come into a voltage controlled attenuator this obviously limits the information going into the uh, receiver. <clears throat> We've got a bandpass filter, which is, it's got seven bands, and it covers from 1.6 to 54 megahertz. And then we come into these devices here, which are switchable. So we can, as it says it said at the moment, it just goes straight through, but we can switch in a preamp, this is a 20 dB um, gain preamp, um, covers obviously the HF, this is the HF section coming in, um, yeah, and obviously, you know, if, you know, the relays are in the other orient orientation, that is then into the circuit. Okay, then we move on, we've got a second bandpass filter, now, this says it's to 54 it isn't uh it covers the general amateur bands but it doesn't cover five megs and it doesn't certainly doesn't cover six meters um i put it in because i'm experimenting that doesn't really need to be there um the idea was if i got strong outer band um signals i could block it and it does work it, it is actually quite good but the, the, it doesn't really need it um, for normal operation okay so we come across here then we've got a another switch this is an RF uh, solid state RF um, device this is from analog devices um, it's an HMC 849 and what we've got is another input line here this is from our U VHF and UHF um, front end so it can switch. So this is HF to uh, six meters, and then anything above 54 megs will come down through into here. Now, if you follow this down, we then go into an RF mixer. So what we're using is this is an active mixer. It's double balanced. Um, it's all it's based on the analog devices 831. Um, device it's good for dc to 500 megs it's working in a down conversion um, way um, very low noise um, a good bit of kit so and down if we follow it down here feeding the mixer so we, obviously we've got our rf signals here feeding the mixer we've got uh, a dds uh, device it's basically creating a, a, a it's the local oscillator and what that's doing, that's got a range uh, between 100 kilohertz and 500 megahertz. And we've got another RF switch here, but we'll come to that in a second. So that feeds the mixer. We come out of the mixer. We've got a little coaxial splitter. By the way, all these modules are all 50 ohm modules. So this is 50 ohms and we're just splitting it 
trying to balance the impedance. So doing in doing so, we'll lose 6 dB of the signal. Um, so then we come along and we've got a little, well, I've called it a roofing filter. It's basically an IF filter. Um, it's got a, it's plus and minus 100 kilohertz or thereabouts uh, from the IF frequency. And basically, the, the radio, it does improve the, it, we don't want to send too much information into the old receiver. However, it's very good for matching the impedance because it's, when we get down to these stages, the coupling is important, you know, because it, start, it needs to be start getting really tight. Up here in the front end is not too bad. It can be baggy, I mean, because it's all loosely coupled, but as we carry on into the receiver, it starts. it's important that they're tightly coupled because we get things, same with antennas, you get an SWR and you'll get a reflection back. Um, and basically what that, um, that, that causes noise, you can hear it. You, by tuning it, it'll reduce the signal to noise level. Um, and then we've got another, we've got an RF amplifier here. These are just, there's three of them. Um, these are based around, it's supposedly the Hewlett Packard, um, a little MM, a little MMIC device. Um, and these are 30 dB gain. We don't need anywhere near that. Uh, and these are wide range. I mean, the IF here is at 10.65 megs. We don't need it. It's just I could get them, and uh, it's what I had to hand, basically. But one good thing about these, they're all voltage controlled. So if I can, if I adjust the voltage, I'm adjusting the gain. So if you look on the other branch of this splitter, we come along, we're going into, I've called this is the auxiliary IF amplifier. And basically that, obviously, it's the same as, they're all the same. And that goes off into an analog to digital converter or SDR or whatever you like to call them. Um, but that, that goes off and that's given us our um, FFT uh, display. And then down, if we come down the bottom here, we've got a TXRF amp. So if we get back to this DDS, it's being controlled by a microcontroller. And basically, we can actually modulate voice and data on this uh, DDS device. So basically, when we're going transmit mode, that path will change, and that will come, and then this goes off to the transmitter PA stage. So I'm still working, I'm working on a different way of doing this at the moment, but we'll talk about that later. Okay, so what are all these arrows pointing everywhere? Well, what it is, obviously this radio is automated. So the microcontroller is controlling these points. So we've got a voltage here from 0 to 10 volts. So the microcontroller is controlling that voltage. We've got a number of bands here, seven bands. The microcontrollers are, are basically switching in the relevant band as per the programming. Same with the switching in and out of the preamp and second bandpass filter. Same here, it's all controlled with microcontrollers. So, yeah. Now, the other thing with this, it means I can calibrate the radio. We can adjust, because uh, the, obviously they don't work linearly across the whole band and different frequencies have got slightly different characteristics. So in the program, I've actually written tables and it, what it does, it just adjusts the voltages at these various points. It's tuning, basically, that, that's what we're doing. Um, do anything else? Yeah, okay, yeah, th this double balance mixer, it only needs sort of minus 20 dBm, that's what we're feeding it from this and it works uh, extremely well. But, uh, okay, well, let's let's go and have a look inside the uh, radio, and then we'll point these these bits out. This is basically our front end. I've undone the screw, so I can take it off. It's all a bit Heath Robinson. 
But let's have a look in here and I'll, we'll go through it. Here we've got, that's our um, voltage control attenuator, which is controlling the RF levels coming into the front end. And it goes across and we've got this unit at the back. This is the bandpass filter. Uh, it's a general coverage bandpass filter that covers between 1.6 to 54 megahertz and that's across seven bands okay so our receive signals are going to come coming in here um no no they're not they're actually coming in here and they pass through this array of um so they pass through and each one of these is a is a different filter it's controlled by pin diodes so basically what's happening is when one of these goes to 5 volts, it'll switch the relevant band on, and then we pass through. This is made by Yanni Lab. Um, it's a very good, um, very good filter. They're a bit pricey, but um, it's a hell of a lot easier than making them yourself. Um, so we come out of this, and then we, with a bit of RF plumbing, we go down, and on the underside of here is a the preamp which is the little relay set and what have you and that passes through and if we move the camera if I gently can move the camera okay we can see and you can see at this point that that's where it comes out of the the preamp okay we then travel along and we get into I think which one is it yeah, it's this one. So at the top here, the RF signals come in, and this is our second bandpass filter, which I'm not really using, but this is um, set for each of the amateur bands from uh, 160 meters to 10 meters. It doesn't cover the 5 meg. Um, I think it's a 60 meter band. It doesn't cover it. But this uses, obviously, relays, and then switches over. This was a, I bought this in kit form um, from a, a Russian uh, vendor. I've forgotten the name of them. If I can find the link, I'll leave it in the description. Um, you have to wind all your own coils and all that good stuff. He does make them ready-made as well, so he will build them for you. Uh, but yeah, that travels through. I've just put this edition of the little LEDs. I don't know if you can see those, but they basically, they light up when it tells you which band you're on uh, when it's engaged okay and then we pass from here and then it goes into this switch this has got the little uh, solid state um, relay on there so one side is the HF six meters and then coming from the on the other one actually connects to I think it's this one oh no, it's this one. Um, that's your VHF, UHF front end input. So that's where the RF comes in and that obviously switches it. And on the output of that goes to this little boxed off area, which you can't see. And I am not taking it apart because uh, it's too much work. But that's where the RF mixer is. We've got the IF amplifiers, the auxiliary main, and there's a splitter in there. And I'll just show you quickly what they actually look like, what modules I've used. And if we look on the other side. Okay, so these are, this is where we've got all the, the RF plumbing going on. So we've got, this is our HF antenna coming in here. This is our VHF, UHF, RF in this point. That's our first LO, which is coming from the DDS, which we'll take a look at in a second. Um, we've got an IF output. This is the auxiliary. So this goes to analog, this goes to an analog digital converter. And over the far side, that's our radio IF out, which has got that um, filter that's in line with it. Okay, and if you look at the back here, um, as you can imagine, we've got quite a lot of switch lines here. Uh, obviously, we've got you know we've got ten bands to switch on there, seventeen to switch on there. 
So I've had to reduce those lines. This is all DC coming in. There's no serial data. Obviously, we don't want serial data in here because this is quite a sensitive part of the uh, radio. So I don't want any noise in there, hence why it's all screened off and, and uh, you know, put to bed. Obviously, that, the, the mixer and IF are actually screened off. I've basically used copper slug tape uh, as a screen it works very well um, so what I've done I've used here we've got DC lines you can't see them but they plug in, in at the back and these we've got some ICs in here which are uh, CMOS ITCs I think they're CD4028 which is a BCD to decimal converter and obviously we from the microcontroller we can actually send it a code and we know which band we're going to be switching on at any point in time and it also we've got things like the switch over um, you know from from UHF to HF we've also got um, that, where is it yeah we've also got the relay that switches the um, you know switches the preamp on and off you know it just engages it and disengages it so obviously here, this is our voltage controlled attenuator, which is obviously, that's the aerial, the antenna. If we adjust that, you can see, yeah, the antenna, HF antenna or signals actually come in at that point. And obviously we've got a 0 to 10 volt swing on that. It also needs five volts as well because there's a 0.7 of a volt bias to, to bias it. So there's a little emitter follower circuit happening here with a transistor and if you see you there's a little um trimmer so we can get to our 0.7 of a volt to uh to bias the the attenuator okay for our amplifiers which is again in underneath all encapsulated um there's a little regulator board you can see some of these little regulators that are on there um but basically the dc from DC voltage is coming from it's being conditioned but ultimately it's coming from the uh, microcontroller and that controls the voltages for the amplifiers which you can't see they're all encapsulated so obviously if I can show you you can see you can see where that copper what's well, saying I'm very reluctant to take that open but I, I've got some I can just show you what they they actually look like um, but as I say, you know, we're not really going to use, we're not really using this. It works very well, but I, you know, it's not general coverage where this one at the back here is, the bandpass filter. But um, this front end works very well. Obviously, I'll put the lid on it because I want to keep all the computer noise and stuff out of it. Okay, speaking of noise, uh, if you look across here, these are all capacitors. This is for decoupling because obviously you know our cables all the wires come up from the microcontroller behind this so these are all i think they're 0 0.01 microfarad um they're just multi-layer ceramics but they're on each line uh, again it's just decoupling i just want to try and keep the noise out of there Okay, so this is the underside of the unit. This is our DDS, uh, yeah, it's basically a synthesizer. It's creating our LO, which is coming away from here. Uh, let's just zoom in a bit. Okay, so this is using the analog devices. I think it's the 9910, um, yes, yeah, the DDS. I see, and it's a 14 bit, it's got a resolution, tuning resolution of 0 0.23 hertz, which is, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's more than enough that we need for something like this. However, um, this is, it's actually an Arduino shield, it's on top of an Arduino Mega, um, we've actually repurposed it. If you look over here, this one, there's another Arduino Mega under here. This is doing all the heavy lifting. That's basically controlling the whole radio. 
and we've got a little I2C boss that's coming across and it's sending the information to uh, to the to this uh, IC. Now, this was designed as a signal generator. Um, there's a outfit in the Ukraine, I think they're in the Ukraine, um, Gra and Afech, A F C H. Um, but they're very good, incredibly stable. It's got a very good uh, oscillator on it. I paid for a very stable one. <laughs> but uh, I think they sell them in kit form as well. I wouldn't like to put this together if I want this. Um, I did ask them, I said, well, look, you know, would it make a, a VFO or, you know, could I do that? And they said, no, it's just, it's, it wouldn't do it. Anyway, I got it and I basically wrote, rewrote a lot of the... Uh, the software, the library, there's an odd, I don't know who's written it, but on the Arduino, I was saying there's a library for this and that's what they're using. And they've, I've seen their coding, it's very clever. And whoever's written it really knows what they're doing, but uh, you know, I've got it now, I've changed it around and I've got it so it'll it'll tune and now we've, we've, we're making it so it'll actually modulate, you know, in uh, sidebands and AM. Now, I've, I'm actually, in negoti negotiation, I'm actually uh, speaking with analog devices via their forums and I see other people have too. I'm just trying to figure out how I can modulate FM on it. It can be done. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how I'm gonna do that, but you know, it's, uh, it's just another challenge. Um, if we go over to this side, and we'll see we've got another Arduino Mega in here. Those voltages, because these only give out PWM um, signals. It, it, there's no uh, digital to analog converters in this. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm actually, um, with these op amps and some capacitors and stuff, there's four there, I can convert it to a DC signal. It's a bit of a tedious way of doing things, but it does work. And I can get clean DC. The only problem is, you know, you. I can't get fast reaction because of the, the speed of the, because the capacitor, so, uh, you know, there it is. Okay, so in the next video, we'll go through more of the function of the microcontrollers and what they're doing, and there's obviously quite a lot more going on. But, um, you know, if you've got any questions, please feel free to ask. If you've got any suggestions, please feel free to <laughs> You know, let me know because uh, yeah, it's this is quite a project as you can see, but um, yeah, it's one of those things you sort of get so far with it, and then you find something else, and then you wish you hadn't done it that way, and you know the usual stuff. But um, yeah, oh, just yeah, these these are signal generators. They're very good. Uh, so you know you've got quite a range on there. They're very stable and you don't get all the spurs. And that's what I like about it. Because if you look, if we can zoom in a little bit more, let's have a look. That's as far as we can go. But there's some little, um, they look like balance um, on here. So it's obviously a balanced signal and then they're obviously, um, you know, making it into single ended. Um, or it's for some reason, but it's clean. It's very clean. There's it, there's hardly any spurs on this at all. And it's, it, it, I've got test equipment that doesn't isn't as good as this. You know, okay, it's a bit dated, but for what it is, that's pretty. It's pretty good. So uh, yeah, repurposed as a VFO uh, local oscillator, and obviously, as I say, we we're modulating it as well. So I'm still testing for the transmitter because obviously. You know, you've got to be careful what you send into a transmitter. And I'm going to try it. I'm trying to do it without an addition of more bandpass filters. But if I have to use the bandpass filters, I use the received ones. You know, they should be fine. So I just re-pipe it back through the those filters. If there's any, uh, you know, there's any spurs and harmonics and other order, and little nasty gremlins on there. But from what I've seen, it's looking pretty good on my, my test equipment. Okay, well, I'll leave you with some pictures of the um, modules that you couldn't see. Um, I'll leave some links. I'll even leave you a link if I can figure it out so you can have a look at the uh, 
the little block diagram I've, I drew and I'll see if I can put a bit more meat on the bone there and I'll, I'll leave some links to some of these uh, data sheets because obviously I've skimmed over a lot of this so uh, okay I'll talk to you soon.